Former UFC fighter Edward Dalton struggles to live post-retirement, hence he's forced to take a job as a bouncer at a troubled Florida Kiss Roadhouse. The job is as advertised at first, but then he discovers the custom trouble as a reason. Hey folks, Luper Ipa here, and welcome to my review of Roadhouse, the latest action flick directed by Doug Lyman starring Jane Gyllenhaal and introducing Conor McGregor. Roadhouse is a remake of the namesake 1989 movie starring Patrick Swayze as Dalton, though James and not Edward. I haven't watched it and it seems to be a cult classic, but I honestly never heard of it before Lyman's reimagining. So my opinion would be based on this new film on its own, just wanted to be clear. Let's start by saying I had tons of fun with the movie. Sure, it ain't the brightest action flake, but it delivers every punch that it wanted to land. And it does so right from the start, as Roadhouse opens in an illegal backyard boxing rig where a fighter played by Post Malone mows people after people only to forfeit and give up his wins the moment he sees the next challenger is Dalton. That is a smart way of opening the movie, as it sets the tone for the fight sequences, as well establishes Dalton as a badass without doing anything. After the fight, he gets off for the job, he refuses, and of course there's a dramatic moment who makes him realize maybe it's worth taking the job. From there, the story moves out to the Florida Keys, where this roadhouse called the Roadhouse is located. What happens next? fight, drama, fight, drama, and so forth. Really, that's the pattern of the movie's narrative. And guess what? It works, because not every movie needs to dive into the character psychology or deconstruct a character's existence. Sometimes a movie can just be what's on the screen and that's totally fine as long as it doesn't pretend to be more. And that's not the case in Roadhouse. Dalton is broken homeless at the beginning of the movie, but the film doesn't pretend to be a critique on MMA sports nature. The UFC is only in Dalton's flashbacks. Great looking flashbacks, but only part of the character's background. Dalton is that situation for a very specific reason which is later explained, and that's it. Sure, we're not giving a reason as to why that happened. Would have been nice to have an explanation than just rage? Maybe, but again, Roadhouse just wants to be punches and blood and drama and that's it. And again, the movie works because it knows what it is. To the point you don't give a crap, the love story is totally phoned in, and the villain's plan is not that bright to begin with. I mean, what context would have made a totally unhinged, R-rated Looney Tunes brawler like Knox's Conor McGregor work if not this one? Really, the whole narrative is an excuse to have fight scenes. Not to say it doesn't do some narrative things generally well, in general, Dante's arc is a classic hero's journey, yet is well made. Speaking of fight scenes, online some people complain about the way they are shot. It's mostly wide lenses taking you in the middle of the action, and more often than not, they focus on the character of Troy's face. They try to fake some sort of one-shot, but overall I really like them. They are very specific, and overall they make for quite the immersion into the action, causing viscerality from time to time. And those scenes make this film on its poor theaters as those would have not only looked great on the big screen, but the 3D audio technology would have worked wonders, as the action coupled with the Roadhouse ambient make for a pretty kick-ass dynamic audio. Really would have been great. Going back to the story, Roadhouse is almost completely head on Jay Gyllenhaal's shoulders alone. He is a believably damaged person as well as a charismatic leader when he teaches the other bartenders how to deal with the clientele. And of course, he is an injured when he needs to be. Not an Oscar-worthy performance, but a pretty good one nonetheless that could make him the new Nissan Reeves like action star. He also got pretty ripped, probably as much as he did for South Paul back in the day. I read a lot of takes on Conor McGregor's performance. To me, he does what he's supposed to do by playing an over the top character like Knox. Nothing special, but he did the job. However, there is a moment where we see a glimpse of potential, as Knox and Inge punches Dalton's face over and over again, almost beating him to a pulp, yet Dalton keeps staring him right in the eyes. In that moment, we have a pretty good reaction from Connor, the real acting bit of his in the movie, in a blink and you miss it moment. We have a smooth transition from total fun to terror with a pretty good line delivered. Of course, with Roadhouse being Roadhouse, he goes back to be a crazy person, but that moment is nice. The film also stars the ever so large Daniela Melchior, Billy Magnussen, Jessica Williams and Joaquin de Almeida, as well as Post Malone as we said before. All of them do a fine job, but you ain't gonna remember them for this movie. Overall, I score Roadhouse with a 7.5 out of 10. It's a pretty dumb movie that knows it is dumb, but it's an excuse to give great fights and to justify Jay Gyllenhaal and Conor McGregor going at it. And it delivers. That's it for this review. Let me know your take on Roadhouse down in the comments, especially if you don't agree with me. Let's debate. If you like this video, be sure to leave a like and or subscribe depending on which platform you're watching this on. You can find Wikos on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, X, TikTok and Twitch. This way you won't miss any of our content. My name is Luke Ripa, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on Wikos.